join me on the penultimate weekend before the river season closes and we're on the banks of the River Dane and we're in search of chub. Um, it's a special river as the River Dane and it was a choice today between going up to the Ribble again and you know fishing for them days or coming on the Dane and facing the prospect of a harder day but sometimes in fishing you know the challenge is what it's all about and this river behind me and fooling their ch the chub that live in it is the challenge today. So the setup for the session today I've gone with my 14 foot Drenanaculite Plus, four pound four ounce float fish and I've got that down to a six number four fine tip stick float but it's got a good body on it so you can hold back. I've got it fished shirt button style but then down to a bulk of number four two number eight droppers down to a tiny size 20 hook and some people when you when you talk about chub fishing and they see such a small hook you know do worry but that hook is more than enough to catch the chub that are in this river that go up to about three to five pound um, max but there are quite a few chublets in there as well so I'm going to start off light and that is the setup that we'll be going with today. Let's take a look at the side tray and the swim. Right, so side tray for today. I've got about three pints of red maggot. About a pint and a half of Cheshire particle hemp. Two pound, one ounce hook link. A small size 20 hook. And some shot for balancing the float right down. And of course... The two most important pieces, a depth plummet and a pink disgorger, without which all this is useless. Let's have a look at the swim. So what we've got, we've got a, a snag right on our inside here. And what that's created is like a slack on the inside here. Sometimes you can stand in the water here in summer when you're catching a lot of fish. But like I said at the start today, I think it's going to be chub fishing and only a few fish. Or if we get lucky, we might have a really good day. But what you don't want to be doing is disturbing the water down there. Got me keep net ready in the edge. So all that disturbance is done at the start. Now, you sat still, drip feeding the peg. And there's no more disturbance to go on in this part of the water here. You've done it all at the start and got it out the way as quietly as possible. The swim, as I say, has got a slack here. The flow, which is quite good today because you've got a bit of the white bubbles on so you can see, comes off the edge of the tree and you have a straight trot and it goes down and if I zoom into the distance, I don't know whether you can make out my uncle, he's just sat behind that willow there. So we've got a good distance between us and like I say, today's we be one of them days where you hope to get one or two fish but we are chub fishing so you never know but that's the swim and let's make a start right so the past couple of blogs we've been on the the big river ribble and i've enjoyed fishing for them dace and the the chub and that flatty but there's something about the intimate small river dane that is special you know, the, you can hear the birds singing all the time and it, it's just a beautiful river to be on the banks of. And time and time again, no matter where I go, whether it's the River D, the Seven, the Y or the Ribble, I'm always drawn back to this little beautiful river. And anyone that fishes it that's local will, will know it holds that little bit of magic. So feeding today um, is going to be light. In the past videos, it's been, you know, handfuls of baits on the big river ribble because it's a huge head of fish. And, you know, putting that through the swim each time has probably been the norm. Today, on here, I'm going to start with that because you just don't know what's in the swim. You could have 10 fish in front of you. You could have a big shoulder three pound chub. So, feeding at first is going to be literally five or six maggots, and I'm going to be putting them 
probably about there maybe a bit further so they're going just on the inside of this line but only feeding very light if you start hitting chub every cast you can match it accordingly but just to start with I'm just gonna trickle some maggots in and probably end up putting my hemp in line with that shadow looks like a nice place to put it it's a nice depth down the swim and the beauty of drip feeding the swim is first trot down normally there's a fish waiting and just towards in line with them willows down there the floats buried and it looks like we've got a a little small trublet which for the start of the session is a great start there we go there's that chub and an excellent tactic just drip feeding the peg while you're setting up only five or six maggots every couple of minutes you know set your rod up thread the line put some in put your rig on put some more bait in and normally when chub fishing there's one waiting and hopefully there's one or two more of these fish about and we can have a nice net of chub today that chub's in the net now and these days can be quite mentally draining the days where it's a bite of chuck like on the ribble recently you'd almost go into autopilot but with this type of chub fishing you might only get one of them fish every half an hour and they can come anywhere in the swim you might not get a bite for half an hour and then the float berries five yards down the swim so you've got to be concentrating on every trot down as such expecting that float to bury and it might only do that one once every half an hour sometimes some days if you're really lucky obviously the, the chub are sat there and you can do a good weight of chub you know, like you're talking like 40 50 pound of chub but some days it's a bite every half an hour and you get 10 to 15 pound by the end of the day just getting that one fish every half an hour but the amount of trots that you've gone down the river to achieve it can be a lot you know over the course of a day's fishing and these are the days where it doesn't matter if you catch 10 10 fish 20 fish you go home mentally tired but it's well worth it if you sat there with a net of chub at the end of it so it's taken about half an hour and the floats buried again and this feels like a slightly better one and this is going to be when a longer landing net's going to come into play because on a light hook link it has got the potential to go underneath this tree under my feet so the earliest chance you get to net it the better and, it, and there you go so that's the second shub of the day in the net and it took about half an hour since the last bite so we'll get him out and we'll have a look at him right and there we go and there's that chub let's say about half an hour since the last one and which is about normal really for chub you know they, they move off and then you've got to get the confidence back again and hopefully we can pick them up steady all day we'll have a nice net at the end but with this sun as you can see just come over the horizon um, there is a bit of colour in the river which might save us but it all depends on that sun really if it gets too bad it might knock the fish in but two chub so far
So we've actually had three chubs so far and as you've probably seen on the last clip the last one decided to flip clean off the bank side into the river so we've actually got two chub in the net and in the space of about half an hour we've actually hit three chub so it's going well as I say you've got to watch out when they come close in with this snag on the inside but when them lips come up like that it's normally game over for the chub so fourth chub of the day and I say there's only going to be three in the net and we'll have to make sure that he doesn't jump out let's take a look at him right so let's get the video of this chub done before we do the photos eh that last one jumped clean off the landing net back into the river chub number four and that's probably about three chub in about half an hour's trotting so there is you know good sign that there is a good header chub in the swim right so four chub in and feeding wise i'm not going to change too much still going to feed probably four to five maggots every trot through and um, that is just purely because of the size of the the chub that we're catching if they were proper three pound chub then obviously i'd up it um i'm feeding just making sure that i'm feeding past that snag the last thing you want is a chub to be coming up to the maggots here you want everything to be down of that corner because sometimes the chub can come right onto the maggots and that can be a problem when you're fishing four or five foot deep and you guys who put in the comments about the swans following me well i thought i'd got away with it but around the corner appears a group of old friends completely different river but there they are so we're about three or four chub in now and what it does tell me is there's one or two chub down there to be caught and this is when a real game of cat and mouse can begin really you know there's one or two out there and there probably could be the potential for there to be maybe a three to four pound fish maybe just hanging at the back but there are a number of things that you can do to you know trick the chub because that's what it is it's it's a game, almost a game of chess now with the shoal um, things like I can go down and visit my uncle just to see how he's getting on um, rest in the swim that way you can often come back and the fish will have moved in and, and settled and that is one thing that you can do the other thing that you can do is obviously with your feeding like before we were going down this line here closer to the tree but as you can see there the maggots were spread more across the whole river and the aim there is to get the chub picking up maggots you know moving there to pick one and moving over to pick one and just picking up baits and competing with each other for the food and what you find then is the fish are busy looking for the food that they slip up because they're down all over the swim preoccupied looking for your bait then they are worrying about the danger that they might have had of the disturbance of the other chub being caught and that is what it's like you, you know you've just got to keep trying to be one step ahead of them maybe moving over to a double maggot is another you know a change bait can often bring a bite but there are little things that you can do to keep the bites coming so I've just tucked into a another chub right down the back of the swim and this was right at the bottom of the swim which tells me that the shoal might have just moved just dropped down a bit you know out of the main area where we've been getting them and it might be a bit of a time just to give it a bit of a break and go and visit my uncle and give him a time to move up onto that you know that hemp because that's what's going to hold them in the swim as well as the maggots going through but the fact that they've moved down probably by about 10 15 yards is a sign that they're spooking so after this chub it might be worth just going down and having a chat with my uncle but chub number five and that is probably 
the best one so far. As you can see there, that tiny size 20 hook in the top lip. More than enough to be catching these chub with. A nice, strong hook. And there we go. What a lovely chub that is. It's got little gold on its gill cover. And fin perfect. February chub. Probably the best one of the day so far. And they say, coming right down the swim. So it might be a time to just go put some bait in and go and have a wander down the river and see how my uncle's getting on and give him a bit of a break. So conditions wise today, you couldn't get better really for stick float fishing. It's got a nice colour and there's not really been a breath of wind. But in the last probably 10, 15 minutes, there's been a gust that's been coming down the river and pushing the float into this inside bank. And when you're fishing for chub, its presentation is, is key. You've got to get that bait going through right to fool them. So just into another fish, it feels a smaller one actually. It might not even be a chub. Um, just feeding slightly a bit further the way across. And the first trot down that far line, the float's gone and it looks like a dace. You go, there's that dace in absolutely immaculate condition and fantastic to see always happy to see a dace let's get him in the net so a dace is a real confidence fish and the cloud cover stayed around so hopefully there'll be one or two more about when i say a confidence fish it's because they're very rarely alone like the chub if you get one you know you hope there's more and I was hoping that guy was going to be a chub. When the float buried, I thought, here we go. And what I was doing, I've been feeding maggots just off the edge of this tree. Probably where my finger ends there, so it's going down in that type of line. I started drip feeding for the last 15 minutes. Maggots, just on that dark water over there, so it goes down that line. Hoping that any chub that might have been spooked here, might just be holding in this water here. And I didn't go down that line, just kept dripping, you know, bait on it. First trot down, it bevied, and I must have thought, yeah, there we go, well, you know, that worked. And it was a dace, so maybe there might be some fish holding on that far bank line. Let's see. So we've had a bit of a disaster in the last half hour. Lost two chub, definitely chub. Um... The only good part about it was where they were quite up in the swim here and they weren't down where they've been getting the bites. And that's probably why I've got this fish um, still about. Had I lost both of them in the shoal, I think it would have been a different story. The cloud cover is completely over now and as you can see it's raining. So there won't be any shots of me holding it up, it'll be a net shot. But we'll take a look at it. What lovely colours they've got in the Dane. Beautiful fish. And that's chub number six. And we'll get him in the net. Right, so the swim went really quiet for about an hour. And I've hooked into probably the best fish of the day. And I think we're going to struggle to get it in. Because it's going upstream. And I think this snag at our feet is going to be the biggest problem here. To give it some teddy. Get its head up. And hope that it doesn't see or bolt for the tree. It sees under the rod tip at the moment, oh, it's seeing the tree. <laughs> Get its head up. There we go. And we've got him. And say that tree down there is probably the biggest problem we had there because the fish went upstream on us. And probably the worst case scenario, hooked him down there and he swam upstream. And yes, mate, I know you're there. <laughs> right, and there's that chub. And I thought when the swim went quiet that maybe these, one of these had moved in. They will push the dace out and the smaller chub. 
He's got one or two stories to tell this guy's full of character. He's got a mark on this side and a blemish on that side as well. So he's been around in this river for a while and that's a lovely fish. That's more than made my afternoon. I love it when you get that proper bend in the rod. Only on a light hook link and you just got to play the fish. And that has made my day that. Let's get him in the net and see if there's one or two more as we move towards the witching hour. And showing what I meant by the fish being bullied out, the very next trot after that chublet, or that chub, sorry, we've hooked into a much smaller fish. And it just shows how them, them better chub push the smaller fish out the swim and I say why wouldn't we have had that days before you know all them trots down to get that chub with nothing and then you get him the next trot down a days and it's a nice days as well let's take a look at it and there's that days in all its glory it's a lovely fish that so definitely a hen fish ready to spawn and February has come to an end, we're into March, we've one week left of the river season, it's going to be a long year, so we're at this time of year again, chasing chub and dace. And that is almost the fish of the session, that is a lovely fish. And there's that dace, and that's almost certainly a male fish. Its scales are like sandpaper and if anyone's done any bream fishing and you feel the top of their heads when they're ready to spawn that's exactly how this, how this fish's scales feel. So them last two fish being a dace kind of shows the point I was making about the chub pushing all the other fish out the swim. You know, they, they do bully fish out the swim and that's how you can tell when they're in the swim because everything else disappears and you don't get bites from anything it's almost like the swim dies but you know that it shouldn't do because you've been getting bites and I say I'd expect now to get one or two days and if it goes quiet again you know that them chub have moved back in and just to prove the point the float's buried again, the very next cast. And I think this is again another dace. And sometimes the blog does make it look like it's been very easy. And when it comes to edit this, it'll look like it's probably been a bite of chuck today. And it's been far from that. Believe you me, there's been parts of this session today that have been a good half an hour to an hour of trotting away and feeding without a bite. But it's very hard to show that on these videos. And it's something that I try to do but it's hard to do in 15 minutes worth of video but that is the reward that you get for persevering and again the swim went quiet for a bit and we're moving into the witching hour now and I think this is almost certainly a chub And it's hard really to tire them out downstream because they have a habit of coming up from the shoal, which is good in a way that they come up from the shoal, but bad that the fact that you're playing them under your rod tip. That's another little chublet. And there we go, there's that chublet. And today has been one of them days on the river where just persevering has paid off. In the last, probably in the afternoon, the fishing's been better than in the morning, more consistent, and that's down to just being, you know, consistent with your feeding and persevering with it and having the confidence that the fish are in the river and they'll come. And it's been an enjoyable afternoon on the bank, catching these chub and dace. As soon as that chub's gone, back come the dace. And that's another nice days and you can see the pattern that's emerging there with with this afternoon fishing 
you know, it can be about setting challenges and the challenge of fishing. Today would have been very easy to go to have gone back up to the, the river again and had probably a good day's fishing for days and maybe roach. But these days where it's hard and you've got to work for every bite, for me, are just as enjoyable. It's it's a different challenge, don't get me wrong. When it's a bite of chuck, it's about keeping them coming. But on days like this, when it's a small river and not a huge head, head of fish and you're not going to get many bites, I love the challenge of, of putting together a few fish and, you know, working for every bite. You know, when them chubbing in, outwitting them, you know, with by feeding further over and getting them moving, like I said earlier on. That is where the enjoyment for me in fishing comes on the river sometimes and it you know it can be easy just to go to the venues that are, are easier fishing but these sessions are the ones that I really enjoy the most and when that hard work pays off and you get a shoal of fish move in eventually because don't get me wrong this video will look like it's been all very easy but there's been times today where I've trotted down the river for a good half an hour to an hour at times without a bite. And there's another fish. And they're all coming right in the same area of the swim now. And the maggots must be coming down and landing probably in line with the corner over there. And these days, I think it's a dace, it just suddenly got a bit bigger. Oh no, it's a perch. And speaking of fish that also can push other fish out, the perch is also one of them. And look at the colours of that perch. You know, he's got his fin stood up proud. And yeah, that is a lovely fish that the colours on it, the, you know, how orange its fins are and the stripes down its flank and he's, yeah, in fine condition that is a lovely fish that we've had some nice days today and we've had some, you know, nice chub but that is by far the prettiest fish we've had today that is a lovely fish that Right, so we've hit a bit of a zoo creature here absolutely solid it's got to be a chub and it's just holding down there i would think it's it's got to be a chub it's uh i've literally just finished talking about how you know swims can change and this fish is trying to do me down the inside margin it's almost certainly a chub with what it's doing and then we have the dilemma of under our feet so I'm going to get the net ready because I think we're going to have to take a chance at the first time we see him because he's coming up now right underneath our feet it's almost certainly got to be a chub and it is yeah and he'll have a dart for that tree no doubt but with them lips up in the water and he's ours and that I think will be the fish that will call an end to the blog on because I don't think you know hitting the fish right down there he tried to do me on the inside edge and under the tree and that is the magic of river fishing unfortunately come two weeks time the rivers will be closed for three months and you know, everyone has a different opinion about that. Why don't you leave your opinion in the comments below what you feel about the change and whether you think they should be left open. We'll give this chub a little bit of a rest in the edge because obviously he's had a good fight and then we'll take a look at him. And there we go, there's that chub. And didn't he give us a proper run around on them snags on the inside edge and then all the way underneath our feet. Proper solid fight and a good hard fighting chub. And I don't think there's a finer way to end this week's blog than this guy. I'm going to have a, probably about half an hour of the session left 
I'm just going to enjoy it because the session, the season's coming to an end soon. But we'll call this guy the last one of the day, and we'll take a look at that final net and see how we've done. So, to the little white lie, that wasn't the last fish. I had a little bit longer than the half an hour that I said, and I've had a few fish in the time since we had that chub, a few chublets, and a dace, and then I've just hooked into this chub, and this will be the last fish of the session. Let's have a look at that final net. There's a final net of fish and what an enjoyable day on the bank just over 18 and a half pound of chub one billy and a few days an absolutely great day on the bank and as i say it wasn't easy at times there was periods where i might have only had one or two fish in two hours but persevered and the fish turned up and had a cracking day with these chub Thank you very much for watching. It'd be great if you could like and subscribe, and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.